Welcome back to the show. The nation is preparing to fall uh, silent to remember the servicemen and women who fought in World War I and indeed across all the conflicts, the many wars where people were uh, gave their lives for this country. There is a small ceremony at the uh, Cenotaph. If you're watching on Talk TV, you can see it now. If you're listening on Talk Radio, of course, we will be observing that minute silence at 11 o'clock. In just a few seconds, we will be remembering all those who fell. And we won't just be doing this today, but also tomorrow as well, when there is the Remembrance Sunday service. The Prime Minister, the King, will be taking part in that. And today, there is a slightly smaller ceremony, but nonetheless, very important ceremony at the Cenotaph. Many military figures standing there, ready to observe the silence, as we will be doing on Talk TV. Many at the Cenotaph, and I'm just going to stand up, as I know my guests are as well, to observe this. We'll keep the uh, pictures from the Cenotaph as we observe the silence.
Well, thank you for joining us in that two-minute silence, which we, of course, observed at Talk TV. We are remembering the servicemen and women, uh, not just who fought in World War I, but right across the conflicts, the wars of the past 125 years. It's incredible, uh, Peter Blexley, to think of this ceremony being observed in each one of those 125 years, remembering the laying down of arms, the armistice in 1918. I lost many family members during both conflicts. So, of course, they're, not, they're never far away from my thoughts, especially on today and, and tomorrow. What I really wanted to see was images from Hyde Park Corner, because I'd like to see how many Palestinian flag-waving people gathered at Hyde Park Corner fell silence for a minute or two. That would have really interested me. Mm. Um, however, of course, beautifully, Honoured and respected at the Senate half. Huge here round of applause building. there at the end as well. I mean, I'm, I know there is every year, but I wonder, I, I expect there are more people there this year than last year. Quite possibly, quite possibly. And, and that has to be a good thing. Yeah. Because the more people that show their respects to our fallen, to whom we owe just about everything, is, uh, is absolutely right and proper. And uh, again, we'll, we'll do it all over again tomorrow. Yes, indeed. We're seeing some wreaths being laid there. Tomorrow's the big one, though, of course. Alicia Fitzgerald, today is very, very important. It is the actual anniversary. It is the 11th today. But, of course, we'll see the ceremony tomorrow with the King laying a wreath and, indeed, the Prime Minister and many members of the Commonwealth coming together to do that. Yes, we will. And Suella Braverman also will be there as the Home Secretary. She hasn't been fired just yet. Maybe we'll await to see next week um, whether that will be a different story. But yeah, it's, it's a big event um, tomorrow. Obviously, the whole of Whitehall will be completely closed off, shut down, and, and everyone will be... Uh, there'll be there'll be processions, uh, as there always are every year, and I think that'll be happening across the country as well, not just in London. There are various um, commemorations for, for such an important day tomorrow. We've had some uh, reports of fighting uh, being reported as people have attempted to reach the cenotaph in central London. A large crowd of people bearing St George's flags were seen walking along the embankment, which is nearby, as we know, shouting, England till I die. Peter? Disappointed. Um, it'll be very interesting when we see the papers and the images that Talk TV gathers for later on today or for tomorrow to see whether we see any, see any of this two-tier policing that Suella Braverman's spoken about. Yeah. I wonder how that group of people with their St George's flags are being dealt with by the police as opposed to anybody who causes disruption at the pro-Palestine march. It'll be very interesting we'll keep, to see... We'll keep a very, very close that. eye on that, of course. And we've had, uh, we're hearing that there'll be even more officers tomorrow, Alessia, 1,300 officers right across uh, London as well. And protesters who diverge from the agreed route from Hyde Park face a fine of up to £2,500. So there's, there's quite a lot of incentives for them to obey the law anyway, but there does seem to be something of a crackdown. There is, and I mean, I really don't envy the job of the police this weekend. It's I don't a think massive, ever say, yeah. massive, massive task. I mean, just uh, controlling that amount of people is going to be a really, really big ask, especially when the police are already struggling at the moment in terms of their numbers, in terms of um, funding and all, all of these things. So it's going to be a massive, massive weekend for them. And I think that the issue that they... Um, are faced with it is uh, a lot of the responsibility is passed to them. You know, we're, we still don't have an exact definition um, with this, this issue about what extremism is, for example, in the government um, and, and what words can be used and what words can't be used. The police have a massive role to play there in, in deciding. It's very tough for the police, isn't it? Because they've got to interpret the law, they've got to enforce the law. But I, I mean, is it clear, Peter Blacksley? Do they, do they know what they're enforcing? You just use two words next to one another, interpret and enforce. Right. It's actually the police's job to enforce the law. Yeah. Interpreting the law is for lawyers, yeah, fair judges, point. Fair courts, point. juries, not the police. And Mark Rowley has got himself in a bit of trouble in recent times because he's talked about interpreting the law. Mm. Kindly just enforce it. And as a huge sign of, of, of what I mean by that, a very recent practical example, it's not so many months ago that Just Stop Oil were laying down in the road 
and frustratingly, the police were standing by doing nothing. Mark Rowley went public in the media stating a, a, a stated case from the Supreme Court as an excuse as to why his officers could do nothing. And I was repeatedly on this channel and elsewhere, along with other commentators with policing experience, saying, that is nonsense, Rowley. Stop interpreting the law, enforce it, and arrest those people for obstructing the highway. Can I just butt in really quickly? No, not just now you can't. <laughs> uh, can let, 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 hold on. OK, but then what go happened? ahead. What happened this week? On yep. Wednesday, 42 protesters from Just Stop Oil were charged with, wait for it, drum roll, you've got it, obstructing the highway. OK, so that, that's Sarah Alessia's well, perspective on this. I just want to ask you, because obviously you're talking about interpreting the law and the police shouldn't interpret the law. Of course they shouldn't. But is the argument not that the reason they're having to interpret the law is because the law is not specific enough? And it's meaning it's, it, it's too wide, there's too much room for, for you know, all, it, does this fall into it, does this fall out of it? Is that not a valid argument too? There is a huge, vast raft of legislation from the Public Order Act to counter-terrorism offences, to common law offences that just about cover almost every kind of criminality you could imagine. There's been a degree of splitting hairs from Sir Mark Rowley and the Met Police, and we've seen that because, of course, Rowley said one thing, the Prime Minister has said another, and been very forceful, saying there is sufficient legislation. Kindly enforce it and stopped interpreting. Isn't that an impossible job, Alicia Fitzgerald, to be commander of the map? Uh, pretty much, uh, definitely not one for me. Um, but also, <laughs> I think you'd be great. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, but there yeah. have been some incredibly terrible people um, who who have done it. I mean, I have no idea why Cressida Deck was given that job. Absolutely not after Jean Charles de Menezes. Is. is that unfair, Peter? That's absolutely right. She uttered nine fateful words that morning as we rewind to that dreadful day. Just stop getting, stop him getting on the tube at all costs. Yeah. And within that statement, she displayed her naivety, her the fact that she wasn't fit for the role, that command role, that day. She lacked Never the mind being a commissioner of the Met. She lacked the operational experience. And the Met, of course, got fined in court for health and safety breaches that day. Her career should have ended that morning. And so many people feel it. This is in politics as well, isn't it, Alessia, where there is that lack of accountability a lot of the time. People don't resign in the same way as they used to. MPs do get away with more. Public figures do get away with more. There's so much frustration, I'm sure, from your uh, readers at Huffington Post as well, that there are, you know, you'll expose things, you'll do great journalism, you'll uh, put something into the public domain, and sometimes very little happens. For sure, and I think there's this massive idea of pride at the moment, especially in politics, that a lot of politicians are really adopting. It's this idea that they just don't want to hold their hands up and say, you've got me, so I'm mm. going to do the right thing and resign. They kind of are often waiting until they're forcibly pushed out and don't have the, the choice to stay there in the role anymore. So that, that is definitely something that has maybe changed in recent years as well. I don't think it was so much like that, but I think there's lots of... You know, Boris Johnson, for example, he was a man with a lot of pride. Rishi Sunak's also a man with a lot of pride. I don't think either of them are particularly willing to ever say if something does go wrong, they're not the, the, the first people to come but, forward. But maybe, maybe it takes me. some of that arrogance and self-confidence to be successful in politics. You never know. Uh, we're just bringing you live footage if you're watching on Talk TV. Uh, we're just down at the Cenotaph with those pictures of what is happening. And it does seem to be going like clockwork, incredibly smoothly. And so far, anyway, Peter Black, see, the policing operation seems to be completely textbook. It's amazing what you can do when you've got 1,800 police officers <laughs> deployed. There's been an escalation throughout these protests. When they started, it was 1,000 cops deployed. Last weekend, as things started getting ramped up, it was 1,300. And then, of course, the events of this week, including the police's lamentable letter to the protesters, that cranked things up, and there's 1,800 there today. Officers from far and wide drafted in from different police services. What I would be very interested to know, and perhaps a journalist will do a Freedom of Information Act application on Monday, is how much of the previous five Saturdays pro-Palestinian demonstrations cost to police. 
I bet it is a king's ransom. And when that figure comes out, Alyssa Fitzgerald, there will be so many people annoyed about that, won't they? Look, we've got a police protest, we've got a law protest in this country, but clearly this is something very different from what we usually see when there is some sort of protest. Of course, because, and that's because of the timing of the protest, obviously, if this was just a, a normal Saturday, um, not marking such an important um, day in history, then, then it would obviously be a different story. But I think the trouble is, is when we start questioning how much money is spent on the police um, to, to man protests like this, it then leads to a wider debate about the freedom to protest of in course. general. And, and, you know, how stringent can you be? Because obviously British people have the right, the democratic right to protest. And if people start complaining about the funding that's being put into that to make sure it's all safe, it then, it then treads a line about, about the rights to protest in general.